town full of bright lights and the big sounds. Her, I, I have to journey just to stop me from hurting. If a mama only knew what we were doing. Resistance is our resistance, is this forgiveness of business? Sees me, I say we're cashing in some heavy coin. Her, I, I have to travel just to let this unravel. Shows banana eating, smooth talking, slow walking onto the set. I'm Josh. And that was uh, my song Everclear. Wrote that one in 2006 ish. Today is May 1st, 2020, we're in Taurus season. I am chilling in the clothes that I woke up in. Put a hat on, came down here, got my banana, got a coffee that I just made and some blueberries. Let's put the guitar away. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the show. The Morning Banana Show, number 79. Uh, last time we did the Morning Banana Show, I had Desiree here with me, and uh, she is with the children right now, and uh, I really want to drink this coffee, so allow me a moment. <clears throat> Check this out. We got a brand new Mac, and uh, the old Mac's down there in the laptop, so GarageBand is on that. If I plan on uh, doing some recording, I might use it. I don't know. Not right now. So, Morning Banana Show number 79. I'm doing this for 79 episodes. What can we talk about? So much. So much going on in the world right now. Follow me on Twitter at AdamJosh.com. My website is AdamJosh.com. Just like it sounds. I also own mindballs.org got a big bushel of bananas upstairs and uh, I'm not eating them fast enough I guess so let's enjoy this here we are <clears throat> so much we could talk about we could talk about the indicators that I was mentioning the other day about when all this is going to be over Right? People are like locked at home, locked down. I just read an article this morning uh, about the city of Burlington and how the city of Burlington had received some complaints from the South End and had decided to lock down the vehicle parades that people are doing for uh, people's birthdays and funerals. It's not bad enough that like right now the local cemeteries are shut down by city order. Not a lot of people knew going into this that the um, cemeteries are considered um, city parks. Yeah, I knew that, but not, not, all, not a lot of people knew that. So if the city you know, is on lockdown or the city is shut down, then the city parks will also be shut down as well. So that will include the cemeteries in most major areas or states, if you're in America. <clears throat> so, the city of Burlington, as I was saying, issued a press release, the city of Burlington itself, which is uh, near Toronto, going uh, north from Niagara. <clears throat> and the press release was such that, yeah, they just wanted to ban the uh, these vehicular motorcades that people are doing around birthday parties and, and funerals. It's not bad enough that you can't go and bury your loved ones or uh, do anything more than Skype call or Zoom call your family, but no, you can't even go wish happy birthday by driving by their house right now. And uh, I'm still waiting on Kelly Childs, the owner of Kelly's Bake Shop, to comment on that because um, you know I, I was based out of Burlington for five years I know people, uh, business owners in Burlington right now, 
but uh, somebody that's res- their opinion that I really truly respect would be Kelly Childs, who owns Kelly's Bake Shop on um, on Brant at the bottom of Brant, the south end of Brant towards the lake. And uh, I would take a look if you're an Ontarian like I am or a Canadian. Take a look at, uh, keep an eye out for her opinion on that because uh, nobody knows downtown Burlington like she does and uh, what the city of Burlington is like. So, yeah, I'm locked out like everybody else. Uh, I don't go out of the house uh, more than once a week if I can avoid it. I've been delivering my mom some food on the weekends. On Sunday, I go deliver her food. It's my once a week routine getting out of the house. Um,. I feel terrible for uh, renters right now who are being shafted by their landlords and uh, especially landlords who have deferred their mortgage. Um, Something that uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to do in my scenario uh, because I'm uh, I'm considered a homeowner, although um, when you, oh, it's it's such a complicated, home ownership is such a complicated thing, but um, when you own a home, in my books, it's yours and it's paid for, so... Technically, uh, if you're paying a mortgage and you don't make your payments, then the bank owns your home and you don't. Another fun fact in Canada is if you don't pay property taxes, eventually the city will come and uh, evict you from your own home until they get their property taxes or uh, sell your house. So that doesn't make any sense at all, but uh, if you don't pay your property taxes, um, then yeah. Try owning a home in Canada and not paying property taxes. Have fun with that. What else can I tell you? These indicators about when this whole thing is going to wrap up. The CERV payments last four months, right? Mortgages are deferring payments. uh, Sorry, banks are deferring mortgage payments for six months. And we were told that the kids aren't probably going to get back to school this year. So that brings us basically September, October in either scenario. And you're going into winter, and we're already being prepped for a second wave of the Wuhan coronavirus. We can talk about 5G and how, um, you know, when you go up to one of these 5G towers, it says right on it, radiation, you know, risk of serious injury or not safe for humans. <laughs> I guess one of the uh, side effects of uh, 5G microwave exposure is that it um, it can deplete oxygen from your body. It's, uh, it sucks oxygen somehow. You'd have to look it up for yourself. One thing I find funny is that these um, test kits, some of them have the, the test kits have been seen to be. Um, Compromised. The, te- the test kits themselves have traces of coronavirus on the test kits. Like, what sort of what sort of nightmare is that? When okay, you're freaking out, you're worried about your family or kids, and you go to the doctor. They do this test on you, this super invasive thing where they um, shove a Q-tip basically and tickle the bottom of your brain. And in that scenario, uh, you're thinking, why can't they take us? swab of, uh, you know, saliva or DNA or whatever. No. They need to tickle the back of your brain. And now, with this new revelation about these test kits being contaminated, it really makes you wonder, are they giving you the virus? Because literally that is what has happened. Look it up. I'm not making this stuff up. So that's something that's kind of irritating. Uh, People are protesting. Michigan was the most recent one. I can't help but but think of, uh, you know, this phrase dog whistle when the president of the United States is literally tweeting, you know, make Detroit great again or open up Detroit, you know, open up Michigan, set Michigan free, something like that. Um, What do you think is going to happen? Saying all that, if you believe the coronavirus is completely imaginary, nobody's getting sick anywhere of the coronavirus, nobody's dying of the the Wuhan flu or whatever you want to call it, then you might want to go protest because, uh, you know, you're not, what are you protesting? You're protesting the flu, you're protesting the lockdown, 
people are going to get sick of the, uh, the flu, right? And you can call it whatever you want. Some people believe that the flu has been rebranded the coronavirus, the yearly seasonal flu. And if the vaccines or the flu, yearly flu vaccine worked, then we wouldn't have a flu. So the vaccines don't work in one sense. The other way you could put it is that uh, the flu is constantly mutating. You know, uh, some people are piecing together that these chemtrails may not be completely benign, the stuff that's been going on over your head for the last 10 years. I was reading a, a recent uh, scientific study with uh, doctor, doctors and scientists who are actually, you know, doing the study. I've been linking to it on my Twitter account that uh, they're testing air samples in Italy and finding uh, particulate of COVID-19 in the air samples, which, uh, you know, if I had red flags, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like red flags, red flags. I'm not trying to panic uh, anybody or freak anybody out, but the real world is uh, a lot more crazier than it seems. So that wouldn't surprise me if if uh, some sort of designer bioplague virus had wound up into a chemtrail. That would not surprise me. And uh, in fact, I'll go as far as to say it probably will happen. They'll probably eventually, if not already, have sprayed um, plagues or bio plagues, biological weapons on us. Look at different parts of the world that uh, you know DDT was used on. Agent Orange. So the governments of the world are not above reproach and they're not above this um, testing uh, biological agents on the population. They're not above that. So do your do your research, do your history through your through history, and you'll see that uh, I'm I'm not making that up and I'm not exaggerating in the least. It, it has happened, you know. So, <laughs> coffee's really good. Can you hear the kids are awake? That's great. I said to them, hey guys, I'm going to be recording a morning banana show. If you could uh, try to not be screaming the entire time, that'd be great. But I think the kids are... The kids are... Um, what's the expression? Cabin fever. I don't think they have cabin fever, but they're kind of getting to that point of they need to get out more. So we have a trampoline in the back, but on days like this where it's kind of rainy and overcast, you don't want to go outside and play as much. The other day, they did. Digging in the mud, getting all muddy, but then, you know, they have to come in and have a shower, so they don't like that either. Two showers in one day. <laughs> So everybody's all stuck together and we're all doing the best we can. Um, I gotta tell you, if you're one of those people that are going out and uh, getting food to eat for no reason, uh, I really wish you wouldn't. I really wish you wouldn't be uh, going to those places like, if you don't have to, to go out and risk getting whatever this thing is, then I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Least of all for your for your family and people that you live with. Like how frustrating is it if you are living with somebody and they're going out to eat every day at like uh, various places and they come back and get sick and give it to you. I would say uh, the majority of people are going to get over the virus, uh, but uh, the people with weakened immune systems or elderly, I still say, are are at risk. From what I've seen. I don't personally know anybody that has coronavirus. You know, you guys know I talk to a lot of people. I've talked to people all over the world. I've talked to people recently who have seen five or six people um, at one of their places of work um, wind up with this virus. And uh, they told me that uh, these people have recovered. So, again, if you've renamed or rebranded the flu, the coronavirus, what would it look like? What would the flu look like? A lot of people have had these weird symptoms on their feet um, or on their hands where they get, it uh, looks like foot and mouth disease or it looks like uh, some sort of um, skin abrasions. And so there's all kinds of new uh, indicators that you might have coronavirus. Um, 
I side with the truth. You guys know that, so I'm not going to come down on either side and say this is or this isn't. I side with whatever the truth is, and uh, I would love to see somebody who has uh, absolute truth on this whole subject right now, and I don't, I don't think that that person exists. So my opinion is, let's just side with whatever the truth is. Um, I think the truth is that some people have been, have a lot of people have got sick from something, and uh, it could be the flu rebranded. It could be a lot of things, uh, but I'm not, I'm not denying that people are um, dead. There's people out there that are saying. Nobody's dying at all from the coronavirus. There's people that say this entire thing is a hoax. It's like saying, like, 9-11 was a hoax. Yeah. So you're saying that nobody died on 9-11? Nobody. First responders, nobody. Like, the buildings didn't fall down on the ground and nothing happened. No cars were damaged. Some people are that to go, go to those extremes. You know, the same type of people. Like, Sandy Hook was a hoax. Really? The whole thing was a hoax? Like, what? Like, the CGI? Hoax, like, define your, you know, you can have a hoax and people still die. You can have a false flag and people still die, you know. Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, you guys remember that? Or you guys remember uh, the Gulf War? So we, we realize now, later, like, okay, like, you know, some things are exaggerated and maybe he didn't have WMDs, but, like, to say the whole thing was fabricated, no, those, in 2004, those, uh, those oil wells, you know, those oil reserves were literally on fire. They were on fire, you know. So, wars really happened in Iraq. That really, people really died. So, a million dead Iraqis, you know, if they, they, if they were here with me, they would tell you, yeah, we were really killed. <laughs> so, hope, when, when you say something is a hoax or a false flag, it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that people haven't died. And so, these people that take it a step further, I feel like they're doing disinformation campaigns, but they're really not helping us, that's for sure, or helping the truth. My opinion, side with the truth and you'll always be right. So, uh, yeah, we're living through it. Um, I plan on hunkering down here myself uh, until October. That's, I've, like, my mental state is I'm ready for this to go until October. So some of you watching this might be like, well, the indicators are like, they're turning the economy on in some parts and blah, blah, blah. I've seen this and seen that. I don't buy any of that. And I'm in Niagara, by the way, so I'm not, you know... People, different people are different areas are doing different things in different parts of the world. So being in Niagara, um, from what I'm seeing, my mental state is preparing to be in this exact same scenario until October. So um, that's where I'm coming from. If you want to take my advice, what I'm doing personally is uh, one thing we're doing is learning new trades. We're learning how to get into the stock market, and um, we're learning uh, how to trade stocks and uh, make some money that way. If you want to look at the existence of the stock market itself, the stock market itself is older than the country of the United States. And uh, when people refer to the markets and the economy, what they are really referring to is the stock market. So um, there's money to be made. Uh, people are making billions every day, uh, even in a downturning economy. Uh, so there's money to be made. You just have to know how to do it. So... Um, Find somebody who can teach you. <laughs> well, with all that being said, I think uh, that's a good show for today. Episode number 79. I finished a banana and some blueberries. And I uh, hope you guys have a good day. So that was Everclear, the first song. You know, what should I play you now? I didn't plan this far ahead. You know, I was playing around with this one earlier. Well, I've been sitting here Well, I've been sitting here Trying to find myself Get behind myself Need to remind myself Not looking for the playback I don't know the lyrics Guessing for the playback Say that every man Like number one in our last in line, something bothered me. It helps to pass the time. Follow me on Twitter at AdamJosh.com. Yeah, you know my name. 
Everybody blah 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 Till I feel the same